तो दोस्तों आज के इस वीडियो में हम बात करने जा रहे हैं मैक थ्री नाम की इस मूवी के बारे में दोस्तों मैं कई मूवीज़ देखने को मिल चुकी है इसकी एक तरह से मैक वन और मैक टू मैक टू जो मूवी रही है दो हज़ार तेईस की एक्शन साईफाई मूवी थी और एक घंटा लगभग छप्पन मिनट टोटल इस मूवी की लेंथ थी मूवी की एम रेटिंग लगभग टेन में से फाइव की है साथ ही साथ सत्ताईस परसेंट की रेट मेटोज रेटिंग है और चालीस परसेंट की मैट्रिक्स रेटिंग है जो कि इसके लिए बहुत ही धासू है साथ ही साथ इस मूवी के एक तरह से तीसरे पार्ट के बारे में जो भी अपडेट है वो मैं आपको इस वीडियो में बताऊँगा तो वीडियो को लाइक कर दे इसके बारे में हम और डिटेल आपको बताते हैं मैक टू द ट्रेंच टाइटल शार्क टू इन सम टेरिटरीज टू is a 2023 science fiction action film directed by Ben Wheatley and a sequel to The Meg, 2018, based on the 1999 novel The Trench by Steve Alton. John Hober, Eric Hober, and Dean Gale Garys all return as writers from the first film, with Jason Statham, Sophia CAI, Paige Kennedy and Cliff Curtis reprising their roles alongside Wei Jing, Sergio Pires Menchetta and Skylo Samuels. Like the previous film, It follows a group of scientists who must outrun and outswim the titular megalodons when a malevolent mining operation threatens their mission and forces them into a high-stakes battle for survival. Plans for the sequel were announced to be in early development in October 2018 after the box office success of the first film. Principal photography began in February 2022 and lasted until May, occurring in various locations in Asia and Warner Brothers Studios, Leavesden, in Watford, Hertfordshire. England. Meg 2, The Trench had its premiere at the Shanghai International Film Festival on June 9, 2023, and was released in the United States on August 4 by Warner Brothers Pictures. The film received generally negative reviews from critics, but was a box office success, grossing over $397 million worldwide. Plot. 6 years after the events of the first film, Jonas Taylor has been involved in fighting environmental crimes while helping Mena 1 explore the Mariana Trench, where the Megalodon had been found. Following the death of Jonas' wife Su Yin Jong, he has been raising her teenage daughter Mai Ying alongside her uncle and Su Yin's brother Ju Ming Jong. Ju Ming acquired his father's company alongside wealthy financier Hilary Driscoll. Mena 1 has been studying an 80 feet, 24M, female Meg called Haiki. Who was discovered as a pup and trained by Juming in a reserve in Hainan. Jonas and Juming lead a routine submersible exploration to the trench. Fellow Meg survivors DJ and Mac observe them from the Mena 1. The subs are pursued by Haiki, who has escaped captivity. The subs dive through the thermocline to escape, where they encounter two much larger Megs, a massive alpha male and a beta male, who mate with Haiki. Juming realizes that Haiki had been acting strange because it is mating season. She was calling the other Megs to mate. The team discovers an illegal mining operation captained by mercenary Mantis, who has a vendetta against Jonas for his imprisonment some time before. Mantis' crew was hired by the secretly corrupt Triskol to use the Mena One's access to the trench to farm rare earth minerals that could earn them billions. Mantis kills his crew in an explosion to cover up their activities. Which causes a rupture in the trench and grounds the team's ships. DJ Mac and Mena One analyst Jess discover that the rescue pod has been sabotaged, forcing the crew to use exosuits to walk toward Manti Station, with only four of them surviving the journey. Jess reveals herself as a traitor and attempts to remotely kill the four, but they escape in a submersible. As the crew surfaces, they discover that the rupture from earlier has caused several trench creatures, including the three Megs. Lizard-like creatures known as snappers and a giant octopus to escape to the surface. Jess is devoured by a meg. Jonas' team escapes to a nearby resort, Fun Island. Driscoll, Mantis, and the mercenaries arrive at Fun Island to kill Jonas' crew, but are attacked by the snappers who devour Driscoll. Jonas' group splits to evacuate the tourists as the megs and the octopus attack. Jonas kills the beta male Meg before being attacked by Mantis. He knocks Mantis into the mouth of the alpha Meg to be eaten. Juming creates a bomb out of fertilizer and takes over Driscoll's helicopter with Mac. The octopus takes down the helicopter and Juming injures it with his bomb, attracting Haiki, who kills the octopus. Jonas uses one of the helicopter's rotors to fatally impale the alpha Meg. Haiki heads towards Jonas, Juming. And Mac, 
but Jumin uses his training signals to redirect her to a pod of dolphins. As they settle on the beach, Jumin mentions the possibility that Haiki is pregnant. The group celebrates their survival. Cast Jason Statham as Jonas Taylor, Mai Ying's stepfather and the husband of the late Su Yin Zhong. Wu Jing as Juming Zhong, Mai Ying's uncle six. Sophia Cai as Mai Ying, Juming's niece and Jonas' stepdaughter seven. Cliff Curtis as Mac, Mana One Operations Manager seven. Paige Kennedy as DJ, an engineer at Mana One seven. Sergio Pieri's Manchetta as Mantis, a mercenary in charge of illegal mining operations. Skylar Samuels as Jess, a Mana One worker. Melisanthi Mahut as Rigers, a security officer at Mena 1. Huo P. Van Ram as Curtis, a diver at Mena 1. Kieran Sonia Sawar as Sal, a diver at Mena 1. Felix Mayer as Lance, a diver at Mena 1. Sienna Guillory as Driscoll, a billionaire investor who is financing Juming's efforts in the Mena 1 8. Production Development in April 2018, Jason Statham said a sequel to The Meg, 2018, would happen if the film did well with the public, saying, I think it's like anything in this day and age if it makes money, there's obviously an appetite to make more money. And if it doesn't do well, they'll soon sweep it under the carpet but that's the way Hollywood works. 9 in August 2018, Steve Alton said, My feeling has always been that this is a billion-dollar franchise if it was done right. But to be done right you had to get the shark right, get the cast right, get the tone right. And Warner Brothers have nailed it completely. The producers have nailed it. 10 in October 2018, executive producer Catherine Zhu Jun Ying announced a sequel was in the early stages of development. 11. Pre-production. In March 2019, it was announced that a script for the film was in the works with screenwriters Dean Gale Carries and John and Eric Hober returning. 12.13 in his September 2020 newsletter, Alton confirmed the script, titled Meg 2, The Trench, to be complete, and expressed interest in its dark tone. 14 in October 2020, Ben Wheatley was announced to direct. 15.16. Filming. In April 2021, Statham said filming was set to begin in January 2022. 17 filming commenced as planned at the end of January at the Warner-owned Leaveston Studios outside London, with principal photography starting on February 4, 2022. 18 it continued there until May before switching to outdoor locations, presumably in Asia. While the production was ongoing, Sienna Guillory, Skylar Samuels, Sergio Pieri's Manchetta, and Wu Jing were announced as part of the cast. 18. Post production. DNEG, Scanline VFX, and Milk VFX provided the visual effects for the sequel, with DNEG also handling the 3D conversion. Pete Bebb and Gavin Round served as production visual effects supervisor and production visual effects producer, respectively. Music. Harry Gregson Williams composed the score for the sequel, returning from the first film. 19 Water Tower Music released a score album on July 28, in addition to the Banky Ojo's remix version of Paige Kennedy's song Chomp. 20. Track Listing All music is composed by Harry Gregson Williams. No. Title Length. 1. Into the Trench 6, 14. 2. Rescue Approach 4, 25. 3. Fun Island 4, 11. 4. Fighting Mantis 2, 23. 5. See Dino Attack 5, 22. 6. Octopus Attack 2, 49. 7. Across the Four Seas 6, 26. 8. Monster vs. Monster 3, 22. 9. All systems down 3, 48. 10. Close call 4, 14. 11. Shark kill 1, 53. 12. 
reunited with Mayin II, 29. 13. Chomp, Bankioho Remix, Page Kennedy, 3, 39. Total length, 51, 15. 21. Release. Meg 2, The Trench was released by Warner Brothers Pictures in the United States on August 4, 2023. 7 The film had its world premiere at the Shanghai International Film Festival on June 9, 2023. 22. Home Media. Meg 2, The Trench was released on digital download on August 25, 2023, on the streaming service Max on September 29, and was released on Ultra HD Blu-ray, Blu-ray and DVD on October 24, 2023 by Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. 23. Reception. Box Office. Meg 2, The Trench grossed $82.6 million in the United States and Canada, and $315.1 million in other territories, for a worldwide total of $397.7 million. 4-5. In the United States and Canada, Meg 2, the trench was projected to gross $2030 million from 3,503 theaters in its opening weekend. Two, it made $12 million on its first day, including $3.2 million from Thursday night previews. It went on to debut to $30 million, finishing second behind Holdover Barbie. 320 for the film made $12.8 million and $6.7 million in its second and third weekends, finishing in fourth and sixth, respectively. 2526. Critical response. On the review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, 27% of 182 critics' reviews are positive, with an average rating of 4.5 or 10. The website's consensus reads, it isn't without its fun moments, but Meg 2, the trench suffers from a disjointed story that drifts for too long before finally delivering a few campy thrills. 27 Metacritic which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 40 out of 100, based on 38 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. 28 audiences surveyed by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B on an A plus to F scale, while those polled at post-track gave it an 72% overall positive score, with 55% saying they would definitely recommend the film. 24. In a negative review, RogerEbert.com's Brian Tallarico gave one out of four stars, and wrote, at least until the final half hour, when he's finally free to unleash some monstrous chaos, this is one of the dullest films of the year, a plodding, poorly made giant shark movie that inexplicably lets the giant shark take a backseat to an evil underwater drilling operation. 29. Richard Lawson wrote in Vanity Fair, Meg 2 is confident in its schlock, piling on one ridiculous conceit after another at such a pace that the audience can't help but be swept up in it. That is a harder needle to thread than many filmmakers seem to think it's not enough to just be stupid. 30. Accolades. At the 44th Golden Raspberry Awards, the film was nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Actor for Statham and Worst Director for Wheatley. 31. Future. In July 2023, Wheatley stated there had been internal discussions about a potential third installment. While its development depends on the success of The Trench, he hopes to continue the story as outlined in the novels by Steve Alton. 32. See also. List of underwater science fiction works. Paige Kennedy, born Felton Eugene Kennedy 2 November 23, 1976 is an American actor and rapper. In television, he is known for portraying Radon Randall in the Spike Sports comedy series, Blue Mountain State, and U Turn in the Showtime series, Weeds. He has also appeared in film, with roles in S, W, A, T, and The Meg. Two outside of acting, Kennedy is active on social media, best known for being a popular Viner. On March 10, 2017 he released his first full-length rap album titled Torn Pages featuring Royce DA59, Crooked Eye, Trick Trick and more. Early Life and Education Felton Eugene Kennedy II was born in Detroit, but grew up in Los Angeles with his mother until he was six years of age. He then moved back to Detroit to reunite with his father, 
who died after 10 years. Citation needed. Kennedy attended Western Michigan University, WMU, before transferring to the University of Delaware, UD, and majored in theater and acting. Kennedy's father was a doctor and encouraged his son to study medicine, but Kennedy gained a passion for acting after being introduced to the works of William Shakespeare at WMU. Kennedy subsequently chose to attend UD after performing with high distinction at Western Michigan. 2. Career Kennedy soon moved to Los Angeles and began to guest star on several shows including Six Feet Under, Blind Justice, Barbershop, Love Incorporated NYPD Blue, The Shield, Weeds and CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. In 2005, Kennedy won a recurring role on the popular ABC primetime soap opera, Desperate Housewives where he played Caleb Applewhite, a fugitive who was being held captive in his mother Betty's, Alpha Wooded, basement. However shortly after in November 2005, Kennedy was fired from Desperate Housewives as the result of an internal investigation by the studio, Three Kennedy himself claimed that Touchstone Television, the producers of the show, wanted to take a new direction with the character and bought out his contract. For he was replaced by N.A. Sean Curse. 1. Kennedy joined the cast of Showtime's hit series Weeds during its second and third season. He played U-Turn, a drug dealer and self-described thug. Kennedy played Radon Randall, a quarterback starting over the main character, Alex Moran, in the Spike television series Blue Mountain State. Because Alex Moran does not want to start, he must keep Radon happy during the whole second season, the only season Radon was in, Radon's season ends in the championship game of his lone season when he aggravates a previous shoulder injury. Kennedy reprised his role in the 2016 feature-length film follow-up to the series. Kennedy had a guest appearance whereas he played a burglar in the new 2013 TV series Legit. He also made an appearance in an episode of Robot Chicken as Kirby and Cal Sapata. Kennedy played a gay inmate and gang leader in My Name is Earl and a married inmate and ex-con in Raising the Bar. In 2016, he starred in the YouTube Red original show Rhett and Link's Buddy System. Kennedy played Gerald, the cousin of main character James Carter, on the CBS show Rush Hour. He appeared in all episodes of the show before its cancellation in 2016. In 2018, he had a prominent role in the blockbuster film The Meg, alongside Jason Statham, Ruby Rose, and Rain Wilson. 5. Danny Hawk as Julius Borko, one of Luke Wright's corrupt former NYPD colleagues. Matt O'Toole as Detective Lasky. Production. SAFE was announced on May 6, 2010. 3. The film is the first in a three-film distribution deal between I Am Global, who also produced and fully financed, and Lionsgate, the other two being Pete Travis Dredd and Simon West's Protection. Lawrence Bender Productions, Trigger Street Productions, Automatic Entertainment, and 8711 Action Design also produced. 4. On a $30 million budget, Principal photography took place from October to December 2010 in Philadelphia and New York City. Five six filming scenes in Philadelphia on Broad Street was done on the nights and early mornings of November 17, 18 and 19. Six A class from a Catholic school in downtown Philadelphia was used for a scene depicting a class in China. In the United States, the film was scheduled to be released on October 28, 2011, 7 and March 2. 2012, but was eventually pushed back to April 27, 2012. 8. On review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 60% based on 114 reviews, with an average rating of 5.70 or 10. The website's critics' consensus reads, while hard-hitting and violently inventive, SAFE ultimately proves too formulaic to set itself apart from the action thriller pack including some of its star's better films. 9 On Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 55 out of 100, based on 25 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. 10. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone said that the trouble with SAFE is that you know where it's going every step of the way. He also added that between the fists, kicks, bullets, car chases and broken trachea, the movie could have milked the sentiment of that relationship until you puked. 
but Statham and the Scrappy Chan play it hard. The restraint becomes them. Statham is still playing it safe and safe, but vulnerability is showing through the cracks. 11 Claudia Poog of USA Today gave the film a moderately positive review, saying that Yakin's slick direction, marked by quick cuts, unstinting energy and a lack of sentimentality, makes the action scene satisfying, but thought the dialogue was riddled with clichés. 12. Robert Abiel of the Los Angeles Times scored three or five stars, saying Yakin gives his star plenty of room to look mean, think fast, drive faster, punch, quip, mow down and charismatically bond with the most imperiled child character in screen memory. 13 Kim Newman gave four or five stars in Empire, describing it as a rough, exhausting, exhilarating action picture with a payoff which would have delighted Sam Fuller or Howard Hawks. 14. Ben Wheatley, born 1972, one is an English filmmaker, film editor, and animator. Beginning his career in advertising, Wheatley first gained recognition and acclaim for his commercials and short films, before transitioning into feature films and television programs. He is best known for his work in the thriller and horror genres, with his films frequently incorporating heavy elements of black comedy and satire. Wheatley has received numerous accolades for his work, including an Evening Standard British Film Award, five British Independent Film Award nominations, and numerous awards and honors from film festivals including South by Southwest, Carla Viveri, Mar del Plata, Raindance, Toronto and Cannes. Career Initially a short filmmaker and animator, Wheatley moved his work to the internet, and was a regular contributor to the B3 Tar message board. His clip cunning stunt, which shows his friend Rob Hill jumping over a car, has had over 10 million views. Citation needed the hundred or so short animations and games found on the Mr. and Mrs. Wheatley site were noticed by large media companies, and Wheatley's work expanded into mainstream media. Citation needed. In 2006, Wheatley won a Lion Award at Cannes Advertising Festival for directing the AMBX Viral, with The Viral Factory. Two in July 2006 he directed live-action sections of the TV series Modern Toss, I Live Air, Alan, Drive-By Abuser, Customer Services, Accident and Emergency, Citizen's Advice, Illegal Alphabet, which was aired on Channel 4. Wheatley has also written and created clips for BBC Two's Time Trumpet, and has appeared in and directed sketches for BBC Three's Comedy Shuffle. Three between 2007 and 2009 Wheatley directed Series 2 of Modern Toss and Ideal Series 5 and 6. In 2008, Wheatley co-created and directed the sketch series The Wrong Door for BBC Three. In May 2009, he directed the feature film Down Terrace in Eight Days, it won the Next Wave Prize at Fantastic Fest in Austin and Best UK Feature at Raindance in London. For five in 2010, Wheatley completed his second feature, Kill List for Warpex, 6-7 The film received critical acclaim and won Michael Smiley a British Independent Film Award for Best Supporting Actor. The movie holds a 76% rating on Rotten Tomatoes with a critic consensus describing the film as an expertly executed slow-burn crime thriller that thrives on tension before morphing into visceral horror. 8. Wheatley's third film was the black comedy Sightseers, released in the UK in November 2012. It was written by its stars, Alice Lowe and Steve Oram, with additional material by Amy Jump, and was chosen for the director's fortnight section of the 2012 Cannes Film Festival. 910 Wheatley's fourth film, A Field in England was financed through the Film for Talent and Ideas Hub, Film 4.0. It was followed in 2015 by High Rise, an adaptation of the J. G. Ballard novel of the same name. He has also directed advertisements for Blink Productions and Moxie. ASCI Fi TV series, Silk Road, to be written and directed by Wheatley, has been announced. It is said to be in the vein of the Patrick McGuhan TV series The Prisoner, and will be screened on HBO. 11 in 2014, Wheatley directed the first two episodes of the eighth series of Doctor Who, a show he has been a fan of since childhood. 12. Wheatley wrote and directed Free Fire, 2016, starring an ensemble cast including Killian Murphy, Brie Larson, Army Hammer and Shalto Copley. His film Happy New Year, Colin Burstead was made for the BBC 2018 Christmas schedule, and remains available to watch on iPlayer. 
13. In November 2018, Wheatley was hired to direct an adaptation of Daphne du Maurier's gothic romance novel Rebecca, a working title film's production. Released on Netflix in October 2020, the film stars Lily James, Army Hammer, and Kristen Scott Thomas. 1415 It received mixed reviews, with a score of 46 on review aggregator site Metacritic. 16. In the fall of 2019, Wheatley was announced as the director of the sequel for Tomb Raider, based on the popular video game franchise of the same name and starring Academy Award-winning actress Alicia Vikander as Lara Croft, with Amy Jump to pen the script. 17 however, in October 2020, it was announced that the film's March 2021 release had been delayed indefinitely, amid a series of production issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic. 18 in January 2021, Wheatley was replaced by Lovecraft country creator Misha Green, and the script was rewritten. 19. In November 2020, it was announced that Wheatley had wrapped production on In the Earth, a pandemic set horror film starring Joel Fry, Alora Torquia, Hayley Squires, and Reese Shearsmith. Neon released the film in the U.S. in 2021. 20. In October 2020, it was announced that Wheatley would take over the sequel to the science fiction horror film The Meg, starring Jason Statham and Lee Bingbing, based on Steve Alton's eponymous series of novels. 21-22 Alton confirmed the sequel would be an adaptation of the second book of the series, The Trench. 23. Personal Life Wheatley was born in Billericay, Essex, England. He went to Haverstock School in North London and it was here during the sixth form that he met Amy Jump, who is now his wife and co-founder of the Mr. and Mrs. Wheatley blog. Twenty for the couple have a son 25 and live in Brighton. 26. Filmography. Short film. Year title notes. 2006 Rob Loves Kerry. 2012 You is for unearthed segment of the ABCs of Death. Also editor. Feature film. Year title director writer editor. 2009 Down Terrace Yes Yes Yes. 2011 Kill List Yes Yes Yes. 2012 Sightseers Yes No Yes. 2013 A Field in England Yes No Yes. 2015 High Rise Yes No Yes. 2016 Free Fire Yes Yes Yes. 2018 Happy New Year, Colin Bursted Yes Yes Yes. 2020 Rebecca Yes No No. 2021 In the Earth Yes Yes Yes. 2023 Meg 2, The Trench Yes No No. Executive Producer. Down Terrace, 2009. The Duke of Burgundy, 2014. ABCs of Death 2, 2014. A. 2015. Tank for 132, 2015. The Greasy Strangler, 2016. The Gowl, 2016. Lost Dog Film, 2016. In Fabric, 2018. In the Earth, 2021. Clock and Lourdes, 2022. Television. Year title. Director writer notes. 2006 Time Trumpet No Yes for Episodes Lorenzo di Bonaventura, Italian pronunciation, Lor Ntso di Bonaventura, born January 13, 1957, is an American film producer and founder and owner of di Bonaventura Pictures. He is best known for producing the G.I. Joe and Transformers film series. The films he produced have earned over $7 billion at the box office. 1. Life and Career D.I. Bonaventura spent the 1990s as an executive in the film industry eventually rising to president of worldwide production for Warner Brothers Pictures. His production company D.I. Bonaventura Pictures is based at Paramount Pictures. His tenure at Warner Brothers included discovering and shepherding the Matrix into production, as well as purchasing the rights to the Harry Potter books by J.K. Rowling. 
In 2007 D.I. Bonaventura purchased the film rights to the six-part series of fantasy novels The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel by Michael Scott. 2. D.I. Bonaventura said that Scott's fantastic series is a natural evolution from Harry Potter. In the documentary Side by Side, D.I. Bonaventura criticized the ubiquitousness of inexpensive digital cameras that allow anyone to become a filmmaker, potentially saturating the media landscape with awful entertainment that the public wouldn't be able to distinguish from quality works. His argument stated that the new media landscape is flawed due to lack of a tastemaker. Personal life D.I. Bonaventura graduated from Choate Rosemary Hall and Harvard University, where he played soccer. 3. He later received an MBA from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. For his father, Mario D.I. Bonaventura, was a symphony conductor, and his uncle, Anthony D.I. Bonaventura, was a concert pianist. 5. D.I. Bonaventura serves as chair of the Creative Council for Represent.us, a nonpartisan anti corruption organization. 6. He has served on the Claremont Graduate University Board of Trustees since 2015. 7. Samuels at the 2011 San Diego Comic Con. Samuels next appeared in the recurring role of Bonnie Lipton in the fourth season of the FX horror series American Horror Story. For she co starred with Mae Whitman and Bella Thorne in the high school comedy film The Duff, 2015. 5. She played a leading role in season 1 of the Fox horror comedy series Scream Queens. 6. 2017. Samuels appears in a recurring role as all three Frost sisters, the Stepford Cuckoos, in the X Men based Fox television series The Gifted. 7. Samuels appeared in Meg 2, The Trenches Jess. 8. Personal life. Samuel studied marketing and intellectual property at Stanford University. Taking off a quarter to film Scream Queens, she returned to school in January 2016 and graduated in June 2016. She was a member of the Kappa Alpha Theta sorority. 9. March 2024, Skylo confirmed she is married on YouTube's Wizards of Waverly Pod. Bender rose to fame by producing Reservoir Dogs in 1992 and has since produced several of Quentin Tarantino's films including Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2 and Inglorious Bastards. Bender has also produced three documentary films, most notably An Inconvenient Truth, 2006, which won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Three he has received three Best Picture nominations for producing Pulp Fiction, Goodwill Hunting and Inglorious Bastards. 4. Early life. Bender was born to a Jewish family in the Bronx, New York, and grew up in New Jersey, where his father was a college history professor and his mother was a kindergarten teacher. 5. He described his hometown of Cherry Hill at the time as all-white and anti-Semitic. 6. He attended Cherry Hill High School East. 7. Where he decided to pursue a career as a civil engineer. His grandfather had been a civil engineer and he heard there were good jobs available in the field. 8. He is a graduate of the University of Maine, class of 1979, majoring in civil engineering. 894. While in college, Bender acquired a passion for dance. After graduating, Bender pursued dancing and was awarded a scholarship to the Louis Falco dance troupe. 10. He worked as a dancer for some time before a series of injuries ended his dance career. 4. Career. Film. In the 1980s, he worked as a grip on the syndicated anthology series Tales from the Dark Side. In 1989 he produced, along with Sam Raimi, the film Intruder, for which he also co-wrote the story. After meeting Tarantino in 1990 and being given the script for Reservoir Dogs, he agreed to produce the film, which went on to achieve commercial success. 11. Throughout the 1990s, Bender also produced Pulp Fiction, 1994, Killing Zoe, 1994, Fresh, White Man's Burden, 1995, From Dusk Till Dawn, 1996, Jackie Brown, 1997, Goodwill Hunting, 1997, A Price Above Rubies, 1998, and Anna and The King, 
1999. He had deals with Miramax and Fox 2000 Pictures. 12. In the early 2000s, Bender produced the films, The Mexican, 2001, Knock Around Guys, 2001, Kill Bill, Volume 1, 2003, Kill Bill, Volume 2, 2004, Innocent Voices, 2004, and Dirty Dancing, Havana Nights. Since May 2005, Bender has been a contributing blogger at HuffPost. On February 8, 2018, multiple news outlets broke the story that Bender was responsible for covering up a car crash on the set of the film Kill Bill that Uma Thurman claims nearly killed her. 13. In 2009, Bender produced the Tarantino film Inglorious Bastards which was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. It would be the last time Bender and Tarantino would ever work together. He also produced the 2012 film Safe, which starred Jason Statham. 14 in 2016, he was executive producer for The Forest, Martin Scorsese's Silence and Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge. 15 in 2017, it was announced that Bender would serve as a producer for the film The Widow. 16. In 2024, Bender produced the film How Kids Roll. 17. Bender makes a cameo appearance in many of the films he produces, he was a police officer chasing Mr. Pink in Reservoir Dogs, a restaurant patron billed as a long hair yuppie scum in Fresh, Pulp Fiction and For Rooms, a hotel clerk in Kill Bill, Volume 2, and as a bartender in Safe. 14. Documentaries. He produced the 2006 documentary An Inconvenient Truth, which raised unprecedented awareness about climate change and won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. 18. In 2008, Bender was a founding member of the World Security Institute campaign, Global Zero. 19. His 2010 documentary, Countdown to Zero, featured British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Pakistani President Pervez Musharraf, Soviet Union President Mikhail Gorbachev, South African President F. W. de Klerk and U.S. President Jimmy Carter among others and detailed the urgent risk posed by proliferation, terrorism, and accidental use of nuclear weapons. 20 Bender was an executive producer for the 2017 sequel to An Inconvenient Truth, An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power. 21. Television. In the early 2000s, Bender formed a partnership with Kevin Kelly Brown and created the production company Bender Brown Productions. The company produced the CBS drama Dr. Vegas and the SYFY Channel miniseries Earthsea. 22. In 2008, it was reported that Bender was working with Nine Inch Nails' Trent Reznor to create a television series based on the 2007 album Year Zero. 23. Bender produced the 2015 Stars miniseries Flesh and Bone. 24 in 2017, it was announced that Bender and Brown would executive produce a reboot pilot of the television series Roswell for the CW. 25 The CW ordered Roswell, New Mexico to series in May 2018. 26 Bender also executive produced the 2018 Netflix series Seven Seconds. 27 Personal Life Bender is also a passionate social and political activist and supports many causes. 28 Bender serves on the board of the Creative Coalition. He is a member of Council on Foreign Relations the Pacific Council. Bender is also on the advisory board for the UCLA Institute of the Environment and Sustainability and a member of the Global Zero Campaign. 2930. In 2004, Bender was a top fundraiser for John Kerry's presidential campaign. 31 He was also an early supporter of Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. 32 Being of Jewish descent, in August 2015 he signed as one of 98 members of the Los Angeles Jewish community an open letter supporting the proposed nuclear agreement between Iran and six world powers led by the United States as being in the best interest of the United States and Israel. 33. On May 11, 2013, he returned to the University of Maine to receive an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree and share remarks during the 2013 commencement ceremonies. 4. Awards and Recognition In 1994, Pulp Fiction won the Palme d'Or Award at the Cannes Film Festival. 
30 for Bender received a Producer of the Year award at the Cannes Film Festival in 2001, becoming the third person ever to win the award and the first American to do so. 35 in 2005, Bender was presented with the Torch of Liberty Award from the ACLU. 36 he was named a wildlife hero by the National Wildlife Federation in 2011. 37 throughout his career, films Bender has produced or executive produced have won a total of eight Academy Awards. 2. Filmography Curtis has appeared in the films Martin Scorsese's Bringing Out the Dead, 1999, Three Kings, 1999, The Drug Drama Blow, 2001, with Johnny Depp, Training Day, 2001, Collateral Damage, 2002, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Live Free or Die Hard, 2007, Sunshine, 2007, Push, 2009, 10,000 B.C., 2008, The Remake, and Columbiana, 2000. 11. In M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender, 2010, he played the main villain, Fire Lord Ozai. 13. Curtis portrayed Lieutenant. The Trench, known digitally as The Trench, Meg 2, is a 1,999 science fiction horror novel by American author Steve Alton. It is the sequel to Meg, a novel of deep terror and the second book in the MEG series. The book continues the adventure of Jonas Taylor, a paleobiologist studying the Megalodon, who now discovers another prehistoric monster, Chronosaurus, also thought to have been extinct. One A sequel titled Meg, Primal Waters was released in 2004. Plot Summary For years after the events of the previous novel, a deep-sea submersible, Proteus, is attacked by unknown creatures and destroyed while on a geological survey of the Mariana Trench seafloor. In Monterey, California, paleobiologist and former deep-sea pilot Jonas Taylor is now working for his father-in-law Masaru Tanaka at the Tanaka Oceanographic Institute studying the lone surviving megalodon offspring alongside his friend Mac. The shark, named Angel, has grown into a 72 feet, 22 m, 31 t, 68,000 pound, monster who draws crowds from all over the world to get a glimpse of its incredible size. In the four years since the opening of the Institute, lawsuits filed by the survivors of the people Angel's mother killed has crippled the Institute financially, forcing Masaro to sell controlling interest to energy mogul Benedict Singer. Jonas and his wife, Terry Tanaka, are struggling with their marriage as Jonas is obsessed with trying to make sure Angel doesn't escape her tank as well as the strain of their first child being stillborn. After the Proteus implodes in the trench, Singer insists on Jonas joining him aboard the Goliath, Singer's research ship, and help with the investigation of the accident. Jonas, plagued by nightmares where he and Terry die in the trench, refuses the request, insisting that he remain at the Institute to determine what damage Angel is doing to the steel doors keeping her in the lagoon. Masao is forced to go in Jonah's place and Terry joins him, finally confronting Jonah's about her unhappiness with their marriage. Aboard the Goliath, Masao and Terry meet Singer and his protege Celeste, agreeing to stay until Singer's deep water laboratory, the Benthos, is able to send the sonar records of the accident. Back at the Institute, three teen boys break into the underwater viewing gallery and pound on the glass, enraging Angel and causing her to ram the glass flooding the gallery and devouring the boys. After receiving news of the attack, Masao and Celeste return to Monterey to handle the fallout while Terry remains aboard the Goliath to finish the accident report. Unable to sleep one night, Terry goes for a walk and discovers a research lab hidden within the ship. She sneaks inside to explore it discovering an experimental fusion reactor. Terry is nearly caught, but manages to escape detection, wondering what Singer's true intentions in the trench really are. Back in Monterey, Jonas and Mac finally examine the gates and realize that Angel's head-on collisions have nearly destroyed the hinges. While Jonas dives in the canal, he is attacked by several great white sharks. Angel rams the gate again, this time escaping into open ocean, but not before Mac is able to tag her with a homing device. While recuperating at the hospital, Jonas realizes that Angel is ovulating explaining her more aggressive nature and the male great white swimming outside the lagoon doors. Celeste asks Jonas to join her in following Angel and help recapture her. 
Jonas agrees and works out a deal for him and Mac, but Jonas really wants to get close to Angel so he can kill her with a grenade rifle. Jonas and Mac join Celeste aboard the William Beebe where they are accompanied by first mate, Harry Moon, submersible pilot Richard Diefendorf, and Michael Marin, a marine biologist who constantly antagonizes Jonas. The team follows Angel as she heads north along the Pacific coast following whales on their summer migration to the Bering Sea. Aboard the Goliath, Benedict Singer, knowing Terry discovered his lab, manipulates her into joining him aboard the Benthos so she can analyze the records of the Proteus accident. While in the underwater lab, Singer allows his megalomania to take hold and he begins tormenting Terry, allowing his henchman, Sergei, to attempt to rape her, though Terry is able to fight him off. She finds an ally in paleobiologist Heath Williams, who promises to do his best to protect her from Sergei. While analyzing the sonar records, Terry realizes that the tapes have been edited, but submits a report saying the sub went down due to pilot error, knowing it's her only hope of Singer letting her off the benthos. Terry accepts Singer's invitation to join the research sub Prometheus, but the sub is attacked by the same creatures that destroyed the Proteus, narrowly escaping when the benthos arrives, the creatures being fearful of the size of the research lab. Masaro, having found out that Terry has entered the trench against his and Jonah's wishes, suffers a heart attack. While tracking Angel, Jonas and his team see an opportunity to trap the Meg in Grey's harbour knowing she would go after a grey whale calf named Tutai, a whale that SeaWorld saved and released before Angel escaped. SeaWorld helps trying to coordinate Tutai's rescue with Angel's recapture. However, after netting Tutai, Angel closes in and eats her, disabling the trawler's winch, which also causes the helicopter Mac and Jonas are in to crash. Angel attempts to escape the bay, but the gill nets put in place across the inlet have her trapped. Enraged by this, Angel attacks the Lady Washington, a replica 18th century tall ship and terrorizing the wedding party using the ship. Jonas, realizing that Angel is angry she's confined again, urges Celeste to retract the nets. Diefendorf enters the abyss glider to try and lure Angel away from the tall ship and back to the William Beebe to be harpooned, but Angel kills him and escapes back into the ocean. Following this, Celeste begins to attempt to seduce Jonas and tries to get him to disclose the top secret location, Devil's Purgatory, where he first encountered the Megalodon eleven years previously, but Jonas refuses to give the location. Back and board the Benthos, the mysterious creatures grow more bold in their attacks, disabling the Prometheus engines after the sub unearths an immense fossil from the ocean floor. Heath inspects the fossil and discovers it is a subspecies of Chronosaurus, a marine reptile that has escaped extinction and the same creatures that are attacking the Prometheus and destroyed the Proteus. The Prometheus is ordered to the surface to be repaired and have bright underwater lights attached to the hull to repel the Chronosaurs. Its sister ship, the Epimetheus taking its place in the trench. Terry tries to escape via the Prometheus, but is prevented by Sergei. Terry senses a possible ally in the Benthos captain and pleads with him to help save her life. He agrees and promises to meet her later that night. When Terry goes to meet him at the hangar, she discovers his throat has been cut by Sergei, who ambushes her. As he attempts to rape her, she fights back and knocks him out with a metal pipe. Securing the doors, Terry enters the hangar control room and starts flooding the chamber killing Sergei. Unfortunately, this results in a Chronosaurus swimming into the hangar to feed on Sergei's corpse and erasing any hopes of Terry's to steal the Epimetheus and escape. In the Gulf of Alaska, the William Beebe uses sea lions baited with drugs to try and lure Angel. Jonas and Mac are on watch at night when they decide to enact their plan to kill Angel. Mac takes to the air in his helicopter while Jonas is towed in a life raft ahead of the bait and uses underwater speakers to ensure Angel appears. When she finally does, Jonas takes his shot, but his rifle won't fire. Suddenly his raft stops in the water, the line having been cut by someone Max sees rushing back inside the ship. With the bait now on a collision course with him, Jonas jumps onto the bait and tries to maneuver it away from Angel. Mac lands back on the ship and reels in the bait, saving Jonas, but Angel attacks the ship's winch and disables it before disappearing. Jonas goes into shock from hypothermia and awakens in a hospital. Jonas finds out he momentarily died on the operating table and decides he is done with megalodons, 
refusing Celeste's pleas to rejoin the hunt saying Angel is too big to recapture and wanting to start life anew with Terry. Celeste again tries to coax the location of Devil's Purgatory from him, but Jonas, remembering Mac's words of warning against trusting Celeste, again refuses. Aboard the William BB, Mac kidnaps Dr. Marin believing he is responsible for Jonah's accident. Mac takes Marin in his helicopter and drops Marin off in the Alaskan wilderness, intending to leave him there. Marin pleads his case, admitting to removing the firing pin from the rifle, but insists he didn't cut the rope, revealing he was sleeping with Celeste at the time. Mac believes his story, but still leaves him in the wilderness miles from civilization. Back at the hospital, Celeste drugs Jonas and manipulates him into revealing the location of Devil's Purgatory. When Mac picks up Jonas, he tells Jonas about Marin's story and that there is still someone on board who has it out for Jonas. He also reveals that Celeste left the ship after she returned from the hospital. When they are back on the ship, Jonas pleads with the captain and Harry Moon to take him to the Mariana Trench. An earthquake has made Jonas realize that Angel hasn't been following the whales, she's been using the Pacific Rim to navigate her way back to the Mariana Trench in order to breed. Later, Jonas and Mac confront Harry, deducing that he was responsible for cutting the line to his raft. Harry reveals that he is with the CIA and was assigned to make sure Jonas didn't reveal the location of Devil's Purgatory. Finally determined to figure out what exactly Singer is up to, Terry uses Sergei's keycord to access the high-security laboratory aboard the Benthos. She is quickly caught by Singer and he reveals that he's really after helium-3, a rare isotope he hopes to use to create the world's first fusion reactor. Terry deduces that because of the unique economic zoning the Mariana Trench falls into, Singer couldn't legally mine the gas, so he used the Tanaka Institute and built his fleet of submersibles to legally enter the trench under the guise of establishing unmanned drones to use as an earthquake detection system. However the problem Singer had been facing was he didn't know where to look for the manganese nodules that contained the isotope. He reveals that the true purpose of the Navy dives that Jonas was part of was to find the isotope. Now, with Celeste having gotten the location from him, the Benthos is finally on its way to the Devil's Purgatory. Masaro, having checked himself out of the hospital, flies to Guam to a U.S. naval base and finds out that the U.S. government helped ensure the lawsuits against the Tanaka Institute went through and made sure they went bankrupt and were desperate enough to go to Benedict Singer for help. The CIA knew what Singer was up to and worked to plant agents within Singer's operation. One was killed aboard the Proteus as well as Heath Williams aboard the Benthos. They ask Masaru to step in to get Terry back as well as their agent. Meanwhile, Angel arrives at the Mariana Trench and mates with a male. Having arrived in the Devil's Purgatory, Singer sends the Epimetheus into the trench to dig for the nodules, Terry joining the trek. Once again the ship is attacked by Chronosaurs, continuing to attack even when the ship is docked. Terry manages to escape the sub, but Singer orders the nodules brought on board. The Chronosaurs continue attacking, denting the hull of the Epimetheus enough to cause it to implode and the docking station to lose pressure killing several of the crew. Singer orders the Benthos to ascend into the cold waters above, out of reach of the Chronosaurs, but the creatures attack the habitat's ballast tank stranding it on the sea floor. Jonas and Mac arrive on the Goliath, greeted by Masao and Celeste to reveal that Terry was killed during the destruction of the Epimetheus. Jonas is shown a security video of the accident, but refuses to believe that Terry was killed. Celeste reveals their plan to use the Prometheus to rescue Benedict and the remaining crew. Jonas leaves with Mac and Masaro, taking the video to the William Beebe. Back aboard the ship, Jonas watches the video over and over and he and Mac see where the video had been edited. Jonas concludes that Terry is alive and that he has to rescue her, using the deep water abyss glider. On the Benthos, Terry, now locked in her room, desperately tries to figure out a way to escape the ship. Using an air duct, she sneaks into the adjoining room and dresses into a man's shirt, pants, and lab coat. Using locks of her hair, she fashions a disguise of sideburns and a mustache and makes her way to the docking station planning to hide in the bathroom utility closet. Her plan is thwarted by Celeste who catches her and has Terry sent to the hangar. Celeste joins Benedict on the observation deck where she drugs him and ties him to a chair. 
Celeste reveals that she knows Benedict murdered her mother when she was a child and bided her time, learning everything she could from Benedict. She leaves him tied to the chair in front of the window baiting in one of the chronosaurs who attacks and destroys the glass killing itself and Benedict in the process. Knowing the Benthos doesn't have much longer, Celeste goes to the hangar and radios Jonas in his abyss glider that she is setting the hangar doors on automatic so they will open when he arrives. She also finds out that Angel is closing in. Jonas enters the trench in his abyss glider and is quickly attacked by the pack of chronosaurs. The Prometheus makes a slow getaway, overloaded with crew and the nodules. Angel arrives and goes after the sub. Celeste radios Jonas and begs him to lure Angel away long enough for them to escape. Terry, knowing she's only minutes from death, undoes her bonds, but is unable to get back into the benthos or into the control room. She attempts to climb into one of the sensor drones, but discovers the mutilated corpse of Heath. Jonas passes by the hangar sensors and the room begins filling with water. Terry manages to get inside the robot and seal the lid. Jonas leads Angel on a chase, but when Celeste mockingly tells him that Terry is still alive, he takes revenge by leading Angel right back to the sub. She attacks and rips off the observation pod causing the sub to implode. Jonas makes it into the hangar. After it drains, he looks for Terry and realizes Celeste's plan. He finds the circuits that Terry ripped out of the robot to fit inside and discovers her still alive. Jonas and Terry are able to pry open the control room doors enough for her to slip inside and start the flooding process again. They get inside the abyss glider and escape just as the benthos is destroyed. As they rise slowly in the escape pod, Jonas is faced again with his nightmare. As Angel rises to engulf the pod, a chronosaur suddenly snatches the pod. Before it can escape, Angel attacks the marine reptile allowing Jonas and Terry to escape. Months later, Angel gives birth to two male offspring. Sequel Main article, Meg, Primal Waters A sequel titled Meg, Primal Waters was released in 2004. Adaptation A film adaptation titled Meg 2, The Trench began filming at Warner Brothers Studios, Leavesden in February 2022. The film is a sequel to the 2018 film, The Meg. Two British director Ben Wheatley was announced to direct in October 2020, three with Statham stating in April 2021 that filming would begin in 2022. For the film released on August 4, 2023. 5. See also Icon Novels Portal Meg, a novel of deep terror List of underwater science fiction works Clifford Vivian Devon Curtis born 27 July 1968, is a New Zealand actor. His film credits include Once Were Warriors, 1994, Three Kings, 1999, Blow, 2001, Training Day, 2001, Whale Rider, 2002, Collateral Damage, 2002, Sunshine, Live Free or Die Hard, both 2007, Push, Crossing Over, both 2009, The Dark Horse, 2014, for which he won the Asia Pacific Screen Award for Best Performance by an Actor, and Dr. Sleep. 2019, also portraying James McMacrides in The Meg, 2018, and Meg 2, The Trench, 2023, and Tonawari in Avatar, The Way of Water, 2022, and Ava. Tar 3, 2025, Curtis had television series roles on NBC's Trauma and ABC's Body of Proof and Missing. From 2015 to 2017, he portrayed Travis Manawa on the AMC horror drama series Fear the Walking Dead. 2. He is the co-owner of the independent New Zealand production company When You Are Films. Early Life Curtis was born on 27 July 1968 in Rotorua in the Bay of Plenty region. He is one of eight children, the son of an amateur dancer. Three Curtis is of Amori descent, his tribal affiliations are Te Arawa Foraning Te Hauiti. As a boy he studied Maua Kau, a traditional Amori form of Taiaha fighting, with Amori elder Mita Mohi on Makoya Island, five which nurtured his abilities as a performer in Kapahaka. 
Curtis later performed as a breakdancer and competitively in rock and roll dance competitions. Six he received his secondary education at Edmund Rice College, Rotorua. Curtis graduated from Toiwakari, New Zealand Drama School in 1989 with a diploma in acting. 7. Career New Zealand Curtis started acting in amateur productions of musicals Fiddler on the Roof and Man of La Mancha with the Carpety Players and the Mantis Cooperative Theatre Company, before attending the New Zealand Drama School and Titro Dimitri Schooler in Switzerland. He worked at a number of New Zealand theatre companies, including Downstage, Mercury Theatre, Bats Theatre, and Centrepoint. His stage roles include Happy End, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Othello, The Cherry Orchard, Porgy and Bess, Weeds, Macbeth, Serious Money, and The End of the Golden Weather. Curtis at the 2011 MIPCOM, in Cannes. His first feature film role was a small part in the Oscar-nominated Jane Campion film The Piano. He went on to win attention in Once Were Warriors, one of the most successful films released on New Zealand screens, the line Uncle Fucking Bully referring to Curtis's character spoken by Jake the Muss, played by Tamuera Morrison, became one of New Zealand film's most memorable and quoted lines, as well as being part of the Kiwiana trend. He played Kahu in the short film Kahu and Maya, a contemporary depiction of a Ingti Kahungunu and Ingti Rongamaiwahin legend. He played a seducer in the melodrama Desperate Remedies. In 2000 Curtis starred as family man Billy Williams in Jubilee, eight before playing father to the lead character in the international hit Whale Rider. In 2004 with producer Ainsley Gardner, Curtis formed independent film production company When You Are Films. Nine the goals of the company are to support the growth of the New Zealand indigenous filmmaking scene and support local short filmmakers. He and Gardner were appointed to manage the development and production of films for the Short Films Fund for 2005-06 by the New Zealand Film Commission. They have produced several shorts under the new company banner, notably Two Cars, One Night, which received an Academy Award nomination in 2005, and Hawaii Eye by director Mike Jonathan in 2006. Both short films circulated through many of the prestigious international film festivals like the Berlin Ale. At the 2006 Cannes Film Festival, Miramax Films bought U.S. distribution rights to relationship comedy Eagle vs. Shark, the first feature film directed by Taika Waititi. Waititi's follow-up feature Boy, also from When You Are Films, went on to become the highest-grossing New Zealand film released. 10. So, friends, if we talk about this movie, we can see this in 2025. एक तरह से स्टार्टिंग के अंदर तकरीबन देखने को मिल चुकी है बाकी पिछली जो मूवी थी उसका बजट एक से लगभग 140 मिलियन के बीच में था मूवी ने 400 मिलियन का आंकड़ा पार किया था जो कि एक तरह से इस मूवी के लिए हिट के लिए बहुत बढ़िया कलेक्शन था बाकी 4 अगस्त 2023 को ये यूनाइटेड स्टेट के साथ इंडिया में भी रिलीज कर दी गई थी और अब ये ओटीटी प्लेटफार्म प्राइम वीडियो और साथ ही साथ ये सोर दोस्तों ये जो मूवी है जियो सिनेमा पर ओनली फॉर अवेलेबल है बाकी आप इसे प्राइम वीडियो और डिज्नी होटल स्टार या यूट्यूब या प्ले मूवीज़ पर आप इसे रेंट पर लेकर देख सकते हो बाकी आपने जियो सिनेमा का सब्सक्रिप्शन ले रखा है तो आप वहाँ पर फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट से देख पाओगे तो आज की इस वीडियो में दोस्तों इतना ही मिलते हैं अगले वीडियो में